August 2, 2016, Karina Vitrano, age 30, was running near her house in Howard Beach, New York, United States of America. It was something she did regularly. She adored jogging. Normally, Karina would jog with her father Philip, but Philip had a back problem on August 2, so Karina jogged alone that day. It was her first time going out by herself. Karina was just 4 feet 11 inches tall and weighed 112 pounds. She worked as a speech therapist but she also enjoyed writing. In 2013, one of her works, The Paradox, was adapted into a short film. Karina went for a jog at Spring Creek Park in the Howard Beach neighborhood of Queens about 5 p.m. that day. It was a short distance from her residence. She was texting a buddy while jogging but abruptly stopped. Her pal called but received no response. Philip became concerned when Karina did not return home after nearly two hours. He recalled a feeling he experienced, which he likened to a premonition, a profound awareness that Karina required his assistance. He called the police, and a search began that evening at 7 p.m. Philip and the police conducted a search, but it was Philip who discovered his daughter's body lying on her stomach just yards from her house. Her corpse was discovered on a weedy walk in Park Marshes. Karina had been severely beaten, raped, and strangled. Several of her garments were gone, and her underwear has been pushed down. Her sports bra had been lowered, exposing her breasts. Karina's two front teeth were chipped, and her entire body was covered in scratches, wounds, and bruises. Karina struggled for her life, but against such a brutal and continuous assault, she had no chance. Police obtained a DNA sample from Karina's neck, beneath her fingernails, and on her smartphone, but were unable to match it to a known individual. The homicide was investigated by the police. They investigated Karina's life, including the individuals she knew and the guys she dated, but no suspects were identified. They assumed the murder was a random act of violence. Perhaps Karina was simply at the wrong place at the wrong time. One of their own investigators provided a breakthrough in the investigation. A few months before Karina's death, one of the case's main detectives recalled a man prowling about his own home in Howard Beach in May. On a hot day, he noticed him since he was wearing a sweatshirt and sweatpants. The man was inspecting houses. The next day, he returned to the neighborhood, and residents observed him entering and exiting backyards with a crowbar. In May 2016, the detective reported the event to the police, who subsequently responded to the scene. When he dialed 911, the police officers who responded to the scene took notes. The notes indicated that the individual roaming the area was a man called Chanel Lewis. The police proceeded to question him. Chanel was requested to submit a DNA sample. He submitted a sample that matched the DNA found under Karina's fingernails and on her smartphone. The investigation developed forensic evidence linking him to the crime. Lewis was interviewed by detectives and made detailed incriminating statements and admissions. Charges are now pending. This is a very good day for justice. And Chanel, aged 20, was captured six months after the murder of Karina. Two images of Karina and one of the crime scene were grabbed from an internet news story and stored on his iPhone. There were over 130 searches for phrases such as Miranda warning, arraignment, and what happens after a criminal conviction, according to the search history. Chanel was questioned by police and confessed to the murder of Karina. He informed authorities that he left his home in a rage on the day Karina was murdered. Now, while you were in the park, um, did something happen? Yes. What happened while you were in the park? While in the park, we were just girl jogging, and then, I, then I, you know, one thing led to another because we get some other situation. All right. Well, the girl that was jogging, was she by herself or with anybody else? By herself. She was running and you were walking, what happened then? And then, you know, it was a past situation. I got angry and then started hitting her and stuff like that. Okay. Um, before you did, where did you hit her? Like in the face and like in the mouth. In the face and the mouth. Mm -hmm. Before you hit her, did you grab her or did you just hit her right away? Well, I kind of grabbed her first. 
he was dissatisfied with his neighbor's loud music. He observed Karina jogging and reported it to police. She didn't do anything, I was just mad at that time. I beat her to let my emotions out. I didn't really mean to hurt her. It just happened. He said that he hit Karina in the face five times, and when she fought back, he became furious and took her into the bushes to finish her off. He denied attacking her sexually and strangled her. Chanel was accused of murdering and sexually assaulting Karina. His defense team contended at Chanel's trial that his confession was pressured and that the DNA was tainted. Some of the jurors were influenced by the reasoning, resulting in a deadlocked jury and an order for a retrial. The stunned parents of Karina Vetrano walked out of the courtroom, followed by relatives, some of them crying, after hearing the judge declare a mistrial by reason of hung jury in a case that made headlines across the country. The jury deciding the fate of Channel Lewis on the murder charge deliberated a day and a half before saying they were hopelessly deadlocked. The 22-year-old was accused of strangling and beating the young woman while she was out for a run near her home in Howard Beach, Queens, in August 2016. During the new trial, the assistant district attorney informed the jury of the following. Karina was attacked brutally, her attacker struggled with her. He pummeled her. He strangled her. He put his legs on her chest. Then she fought for her life. She struggled to get away. And he strangled her until she could not struggle anymore. He strangled her until she was dead. According to the prosecution, Chanel repeatedly hit Karina in the face with such force that he hurt his hand. Chanel informed authorities that Karina was unable to scream because her teeth were shattered when she confessed to Karina's murder. He then abused her sexually and strangled her. Death was caused by strangling. The jury in Chanel's second trial deliberated for under five hours. For strangling Karina, he was found guilty of first-degree murder and additional crimes, as well as first-degree sexual abuse. Guilty. Justice for Karina Vetrano, a guilty verdict in her murder case providing a bittersweet end to a long and arduous journey for her parents. Grieving can begin for us. Now my baby has justice. Chanel was given a life sentence without prospect of parole. Great. The sentence of this court is that you spend the, next, the rest of your natural life in jail without any possibility of parole. It's the moment the family of Karina Vetrano has been waiting more than two and a half years for, giving passionate testimonies in the courtroom ahead of sentencing for Chanel Lewis, the man who will now serve life in prison for her death. Somebody died a million deaths every second of every day. You breathe, you ate, you search your phone for pornography. You are, you are, and you remain true to your character as a pathetic, evil coward. Lewis's mother and family sent letters of support to the judge and did not speak in court. Lewis had confessed on tape to killing Vetrano, but today he denied it. Uh, if you want to say, judge, that I'm innocent. I'm sorry for the family's loss, but I didn't do this. Lewis was unemotional, yawning as Judge Michael Eloise sentenced him to life in prison without parole. Shame on you! After the sentencing, Lewis's mother and his supporters were seen following the prosecuting attorneys, accusing the district attorney's office and Judge Eloise of racial bias. I'm here to represent my son, my son yes, and I will keep fighting for yes, Channel. Yes, in the name of Jesus, I will keep on fighting until the last Amen. breath leave Amen. my body. Today, everybody got justice. Karina got justice, and the murderer got his justice. John Ryan, the chief assistant district attorney, stated, This was a horrifying case. A vibrant, young woman's life came to an abrupt and violent end. Ms. Vetrano's death was brutal. She was pulled from a park pathway, sexually assaulted, and in her last moments of life she gasped for air as the defendant's hands tightened around her neck. A life sentence without parole will ensure that Chanel's hands will never again grab and squeeze around the neck of another woman. Thank you.